to tell you that the next level of disruption in our, in our industry is going to be the internet of things in aviation and how it's going to change how we fly aircraft, how we maintain them, and so much more. So even though I wasn't invited to the panel, I wanted to throw that in here before I get started. As I was uh, listening to all the panelists this morning, it occurred to me that we truly do have aviation innovators, disruptors, and dreamers here today. And uh, I was thinking about what they have in common, what we have in common. And the, the first thing I thought of is that uh, you're a very unique group of people because where other people see insurmountable obstacles and run the other way, you get excited. You see the vast open blue sky of opportunity. Another thing that you have in common is that you ask two very, very simple questions as you go through your business day to day. And they're, they're such simple questions. One is, why not? And the other one is, what if? Now let me see here. Is this the clicker? Yeah. So today, if we can get cooperation with the clicker, maybe not. Somebody want to help me here with this? It's okay. It's operator malfunction. I'm a digital, I'm, a, I'm an analog guy stuck in a digital world. <clears throat> the big, big green one, big green one. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the innovator's paradox and how we as leaders in our industry, leaders and in companies take us from the practical to the possible. And we're going to use the go go history to kind of guide us through that discussion, if you will. For those of you who may not be familiar with go go, we were founded uh, 27 years ago on two main pillars a dream and a vision, and an attitude. Now, that attitude was one of failure is not an option. The the dream was and continues to be today to connect every aircraft with a reliable, fast broadband connectivity system. Now, our founders had a crazy idea of using ground based cellular technology to connect the aircraft. Now, that may not sound very innovative, but it was extremely disruptive. It was so disruptive that the moment GoGo announced its intentions, the large multi-billion dollar telecommunication industry started filing injunctions to stop us. So imagine, as a startup, no customers, having to deal with injunctions with companies who had legal departments larger than, than all of GoGo. But our founders believed in their dream and they successfully fought every single one of those injunctions. And in 1997, they were successful at launching GoGo's first air-to-ground network. Now that was an analog, or that was an analog network. It was narrow band, um, but it was a crucial first step into our learning and to that journey to full broadband connectivity. Just as things were really looking up for us as an industry, getting a little bit easier, the network was, we were deploying the network. Customer subscriber base was starting to grow. We actually had paying customers. Novel idea. When all of a sudden we got hit with what I refer to as the digital slap. You'll recall the days when our cell phone technology went from analog to digital. Gogo found itself in a predicament where we had won the trust and confidence of a large group of business and general aviation customers who trusted us bought our system and put it into the aircraft, and now we were confronted with the reality that that system was no longer going to work because of that technology obsolescence. So what to do? Is, it, is the dream real or not? So at the time, there was a company coming, being restructured, coming out of bankruptcy, 
called Iridium. So GoGo partnered with Iridium, and we were very successful in, in transitioning all of our analog customers from that air-to-ground system that was just about to go dark over to this new, at the time, satellite-based system. Without that failure is not an option attitude, we probably would have closed the doors at that point. But the dream, the initial dream of having broadband connectivity, every aircraft had not, uh, had not dimmed one bit. And our founders kept on asking those two crucial questions, why not and what if? And one day, the what if question was, what if we go to the FCC and ask them to repurpose frequencies for an aviation air-to-ground broadband system? And so that's what we did along with some other industry leaders. We successfully petitioned the FCC to reallocate those frequencies. But that wasn't enough. <clears throat> we still had to come up with the money to bid, and then we had to win those auctions. And I'm happy to say that we did. And what was so interesting about it is that here you have this little startup who has convinced the FCC to repurpose, repurpose um, those frequencies. Now, not only did we win those frequencies, I'm very happy to say to this day that we won those frequencies by bidding against the same people who filed those injunctions against us, those multi-billion dollar corporations. We actually won an auction against them. So the point of that part of the story, if you will, is that when you believe and your dream and your desire to succeed is greater than your fear of failure, almost anything is impossible, almost anything is possible. So I'm happy to say that, that GoGo built its second air-to-ground network. The second one was a broadband, is a broadband network, and that was about 10 years ago. And in the trajectory of those 10 years, we've grown a very healthy business. We now have about 5,000 aircraft subscribing to that broadband business in business aviation alone. And since we have so many financial people in the world I'll, I'll, here in the room, I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the financial performance over those uh, 10 years. In those 10 years, we have had a, our revenue performance has been, has grown to 21% um, compounded year over year. Our EBITDA uh, has gone, it, it, our EBITDA performance is a 30% compound avenue uh, uh, rate per year, or, or for that 10-year period, excuse me. So very healthy performance financially from the business aviation unit there. Now, <clears throat> that brings us to the second paradox that GoGo had to confront and that we will all confront in our industries, and that is still continuing to push the envelope from the practical to the possible. And in, in in-flight connectivity, historically, everything has been done in a very hardware-centric way. And so the task that GoGo has undertaken is how to take the aviation in-flight connectivity industry from the hardware-centric to the possibilities of a software-centric platform. Not too long ago, we announced um, the launch of our Avance product system, which is a software-based system. And I'm happy to say that by the end of this year, we'll have about 700 systems flying with a very healthy backlog going into next year. But what's unique about the Avance platform is that it truly will revolutionize and increase the possibilities that the flying public will see and experience. It has the ability, we have the ability with the Avance platform to personalize, control, the, the, the delivery of the different services and functions. And really what it does is it allows us remotely, without touching the aircraft, to change the performance of the system to match the changing needs of the flight department. A lot of people aren't sure whether or not they want or need connectivity in the aircraft. So this flexibility allows them to, to go to, as, as their needs for connectivity change, we can change the profile and the performance of the system. 
Now, what makes this so innovative for the aviation industry is that we do this remotely without affecting the certification or requiring the customer to uh, put, put the aircraft down for maintenance. Now, in the consumer world, that's a given. In aviation, that is not. That is significantly uh, innovative in our market. But the profile, or, but the, the platform, the advanced platform allows people to increase their operational efficiency. It has the ability to have predictive cost controls in there. It enhances the user experience. Connectivity is actually in significantly improved with this platform. But as innovators and disruptors, what's probably most interesting about this um, advanced platform is that it allows us to continue innovation. Now, we've all heard of the Internet of Things and we see it. We see the commercials from IBM and uh, GE, but aviation is usually not the first to the, to, the, to the race when it comes to innovation because of the safety issues we were talking about before. But the day that aviation embraces the Internet of Things, we will see a significant um, revolution in, in connectivity. When you look at our business, there are those who think, okay, uh, most of the commercial aircraft have connectivity now, a lot of the business aviation have connectivity now, but the reality is that we're in our infancy as it relates to this business. I'm, there are about 6,000 aircraft that have a true broadband system flying worldwide in business aviation. Now, I'm happy to say that uh, about 5,000 of those are go-go systems, but that's not the point. The point is that there are 20,000 aircraft that do not have a broadband system. So when you look at where we're at in our growth cycle as an industry or GoGo as a company, when you look at penetration rates, we're just getting started. And then when you consider the other way to measure the growth potential of a business, which is in our business, we look at every aircraft, we look at the revenue opportunity per every aircraft. When you look at passenger behaviors, and for those of us here in the room, just think about your own internet utilization over the last past five, seven years. The reality is that the devices that we used five or six years ago are very different from the devices we use today. Not only are they different, but the internet is different in how we use them. So five or seven years ago, we used connectivity to browse the internet and to get email for work purposes. That was the main focus of what we did. Today, we still use email and browse for work purposes, but now connectivity is a part of our everyday life. Now we use it for leisure, we use it for pleasure. And the internet itself has changed significantly. For example, now we also stream video, we stream audio, we do cloud computing. So the amount of data that our devices use and that we use as consumers, i.e. passengers and airplane, continues to multiply at a rate that we really, there are people who have projections, um, and I just, I think that we're very, we're significantly underestimating how much our data will continue to grow. This is all as it relates to passengers. Now I started talking about the Internet of Things and the impact it'll have on aviation. That will be the next paradox as an industry where we will see a data revolution. Think of machine to machine connection. I am told that on the Airbus A380 wing, there are 10,000 sensors. Now I guarantee you every one of those sensors is generating data that somebody on the ground wants. And why do they want it? Because connectivity and the innovation and the Internet of Things is going to change the way we do maintenance uh, from scheduled to on demand. It's going to, it's going to change so many different things in the way we operate the aircraft. All that uh, uh, AI discussion we had coupled with connectivity. Connectivity will enable uh, those systems on board our aircraft. But this 10,000 sensors is just on the wing. 
Think about how many sensors there are in an engine and the overall aircraft. And for artificial intelligence to change aviation, they're going to need that data on the ground, both for historical reasons, for analytical reasons, and for flight emergencies. So when you, when you look at the effect that the aviation, that the Internet of Things is going to have on connectivity and how enabling connectivity is to the aviation of things, it is truly revolutionary. Now, thus far we've talked about passenger utilization, which is real now, we all experience it. We've seen the growth in, in, in data uh, consumption. We've discussed the Internet of Things. But for quite some time now, the flight support organizations have been adding connectivity to their uh, applications, to their electronic flight bags, to not only enhance the services that they offer that increase the operational efficiency and safety and awareness, but they're also now introducing new features and functions that uh, were not possible before. It is only through these, these shifts in technology and asking those why questions that we come up with new features and functions that were not possible under the practical world. One of those is uh, what GoGo has done with the weather come turbulence, or they're forecasting turbulence at this altitude, giving them the op opportunity to change um, uh, altitude to avoid that turbulence. This was a feature that was not possible prior to connectivity, prior to those software platforms that make things possible. We've only discussed the growth and the impact the in-flight connectivity will continue to have in our aviation business based on the technologies that exist today. Everything we just discussed is happening. It's happening very slow. It's happening at the aviation pace. <laughs> Perhaps another day we can talk a little bit more about some of the technologies on the horizon on some of the what-if questions. For example, we said that uh, there are 20,000 aircraft out there that have not committed to a broadband solution. So by definition, that is what we refer to today as the addressable market. But what happens if the trends that are happening in the satellite world continue to uh, progress the way we think they are? Right now, the satellite world is getting ready to change from uh, they're now developing what they refer to as low Earth orbit satellites. Um, the, um, that's a very significant change for us because it's going to make satellites smaller, lower orbit, and for aviation, that means that there'll be more capacity and the equipment on board the aircraft will be smaller. That coupled with the significant um, advancements that are being made in conformal and low, po low profile electronically steered antennas is going to take that 20,000 addressable market and grow it to something much, much larger. So the point, my friends, is that um, in-flight connectivity, the revolution that was started with in-flight connectivity and how it's going to alter uh, aviation is just getting started. We are, we are so far from our zenith. Um, it'll be an exciting few next 10 years, let's say before we start really understanding the impact that connectivity has on the way we operate aircraft. So I would just suggest that as leaders, as innovators, we should keep asking those two very simple questions of why not and what if. So thank you very much for your attention. I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Do we have any old school questions? Um, um, yes, got one. morning, excellent uh, presentation. I'm actually surprised that aviation is not more up to speed with regards to data and connectivity. So I actually wanted to share some of the challenges which I have been seeing is mm -hmm. there is a lot of understanding that data is critical and the data is actually the new currency. Yeah. Uh, but it's also not just about having the data, it's about making it actionable. Mm -hmm. And you can really take a decision to your point to manage, for example, maintenance, making it from reactive being proactive being predictable. Yeah. So 
can you just share a little bit more comments with regards to how we can make this data more actionable? What have you seen and what are your suggestions? A absolutely. So I would say that um, GoGo started working with and having dialogue with very large OEMs of both equipment, avionics, engines, uh, probably about uh, four or five years ago is when we started having these dialogues. And really, um, GoGo is more of an enabler in that. Uh, our systems, the, the reason for the advanced system is so that we can have, um, so that we can work with people like WSI or engine manufacturers uh, that they, we can get the data that they can in, in fact analyze and then do the predictive uh, maintenance and so forth. So GoGo sees, we see our role as enabling companies that have expertise in uh, artificial intelligence and maintenance and aircraft manufacturers and they will start to really, they will leverage connectivity and the platforms that we have put on those aircraft so that they can advance those. And, and that is going to, the reason it's gonna be there is because it will actually save hundreds of millions of dollars in unnecessary maintenance. Most of you know that engines are removed from aircraft because of a calendar event or because uh, a time event. There may be nothing wrong with that engine, but right now, because of our approach in aviation of being safety first, no matter what, they have to remove that engine and tear it all apart and inspect it. They do the same with the wings, the fittings, the actuators, the landing gear. So this data will allow us to really uh, understand what is the life of that component. There is a research being done on some of the harmonics looking at actuators and bushings, where with a sensor on one of those bushings, you can pick up and understand at what point that bushing is going out of tolerance. So it's things like that that we really don't think about. We think about connectivity as just getting your email, but how it's gonna change our industry is, is very significant. Brilliant, thank you very much, Sergio. Thank you very much. Thank you.